It's no secret that plastic pollution is one of the biggest, if not the most crucial problem that the world faces today. One of those plastic bottles you've got right there takes 500 years to decompose. That is either 500 years in our oceans or 500 years taking up space in our landfills, subsequently stinking up our cities and polluting our grounds and waters. But what you probably didn't realize is that plastic pollution isn't just water bottles like that. In fact, a massive portion of plastic pollution comes straight from big manufacturers. Hello, I'm Jamie May, the CEO. I'm Tamanda Rowan, CFO. I'm Alex Rios, COO. And I'm Liv Humphreys, CMO. Fighter. I work for my parents who are an oatmeal manufacturer. Manufacturers use super sacks. You all have a piece of a super sack in front of you. And this is a super sack. Super sacks are polypropylene plastic woven bulk bags used to carry north of 2,000 pounds of raw materials. Last month, my dad went through 800 super sacks. That's 800 super sacks going to the landfill from one manufacturer alone, which is pounds of plastic. Globally, there are approximately 100 million super sacks produced each year, yet only 1% of polypropylene is recycled. So, with 99% of these super sacks going to the landfill, that's equivalent to over 500 million pounds of plastic going to the landfill from super sacks alone yearly. Additionally, the growth production rate of super sacks has a 12% growth rate. So, that 500 million pounds is only expected to rise if we don't do something about it now. Thank you. Our company, Fider, takes a byproduct of local manufacturer's waste, the super sack, and extends its life by converting it into recycled polypropylene 3D printer filament. Filament to a 3D printer is equivalent to ink cartridges used in a standard desktop printer. This not only saves the manufacturer valuable time, space, and capital that would have been previously used to dispose of the super sack, but also saves the environment by diverting a major waste stream that is currently only 1% recycled. So as Jamie said, only about 1% of polypropylene plastic products produced in the US get recycled. This is because we currently just don't have the infrastructure to do it. Polypropylene is a very flexible material and it tends to get wound up in the recycling machines. Here at FIDER, we've come up with a way to combine the typical recycling process with the process of actually creating 3D printer filament. After cleaning the bags, we cut them into strips and then we send them to a plastic processor. Currently, we're working with the Precision Group. They grind the plastic into granules like that. We load it into a extrusion machine. It melts down the plastic and extrudes it, and then we wind it onto a spool, and it can be sold to the consumer to produce whatever they want. Today, the global 3D printing market is worth $13.7 billion. According to Gateway Research, the North American 3D printing market is expected to double in the next six years. The United States has 750,000 3D printers, and in the next six years, that number is projected to be 2.6 million. The average 3D printer owner uses about 2.4, uh, 2. Point uses a spool of filament every 2.4 months. That's about five units per year. At $33 per unit for 750,000 3D printers at five units per year, that is approximately a TAM revenue of $124 million. In 2019, 250 3D printers were sold in the San Antonio area alone. For five units for each of those printers, that's a yearly SAM revenue of approximately $41,000. Unlike our competitors, which consist of Gizmodorks, Nephilotech, and Form Futra, we offer a 100% recycled polypropylene 3D printer filament, which is much more environmentally conscious as well as cost effective. Polypropylene is one of the most versatile plastics on the planet, from plastic cutlery to candy wrappers to the tops of ketchup bottles. We use polypropylene every single day of our lives, which, and it becomes a major problem when we realize just how little of it is recycled. In fact, I'm willing to bet that the bottle caps you have in those plastic bottles are made of polypropylene right there. Unlike the standard PLA filaments, polypropylene has special properties that allow it to be incredibly flexible and durable, making it ideal for uses in things like prosthetics and orthotics. 
Right here, we have a 100% polypropylene printed wrist brace. Unlike the standard PLA filament, polypropylene becomes ideal for many different prints because PLA would simply break in half. Since acquiring our MVP funds in December, we have managed to not only extrude quality filament, but we have even successfully printed with it. As you can see on your screen, this cube and the spiders on your tables have been printed with our 3D printer filament. We have managed to do this all on a hobby-grade extruder generously loaned to us by the Duzium, as mentioned before. Today, we are working with local industry specialists, some are here tonight, who are helping us not only scale our product, but refine, since we plan to bring our filament to market this year. So we launched our Instagram in January of this year with the intent that we would be selling this product on Amazon. Since that point, we've been offered national online retail space with Wuxin, an online 3D printer retailer. We've been featured on the social media page of the Duzium, the local children's museum who, where we went to produce our first prototype. We've worked with a local worker space, 10-bit works, to refine our product and learn more about the 3D printing world. We've even been featured on the Instagram page of the Philobot, the international corporation whose very machine we use to produce our first prototype. Uh, we've been working with the Precision Group, a local plastic group who's been so kind in helping us to granulate our plastic. And we've even received an offer with LS4 3D Printing, a local 3D printing service who's willing to test and use our product for their services. Needless to say, a demand has been created for this product. We launched our website about four weeks ago. There's a QR code on the screen if you'd like to check it out. Um, our website talks a lot about the problem itself and our mission as a company. We also offer a uh, mailing list function so that customers can sign up to learn more about our product, learn about new releases, and also learn more about the 3D printing world and the recycling world. So obviously, there's a demand for our product. Once we can break into manufacturing and manufacture a consistent filament, we expect our revenues to double each year. That's a 100% growth rate, which means we can put more money into SG&A and operating profits, giving our customers a good customer experience and providing them with the best customer service they have ever experienced with the 3D printing brand. As our company grows, we plan on provide, uh, applying for a provisional patent in May bringing us to signing contracts with different manufacturers in June and bringing it to wholesale by July. We also want to bring in online revenue in August and in October, we plan on becoming a national brand. Today we're asking for $10,000. We're setting aside $7,000 of those dollars to go directly towards our manufacturing. We've realized that we four cannot keep up with the demand alone and we would like to expand. We're already in conversations with many manufacturers, like Alex said, and we are so excited to be able to work with them. Another $2,000 will be needed towards our SG&A. As Alex mentioned as well, we are working towards a patent. We're still in the process of it as we're still developing the method that we create our product, but we would like to have the money set aside so that we can keep this idea and make sure that we can go forward with it. The final $1,000 is going towards our marketing. That's maintaining our website and making sure people know about us. The majority of our marketing relies on word of mouth and referral. We want people to know about our story, know about the problem, so that whenever they go to buy 3D printer filament, they think of us first. Thank you for your time, because an investment in Fighter is an investment in your future.